Hi, this is Paula from CHE. Here's a segment with Cape Breton Council MP Mike Kellaway. This week, the province announced an Atlantic bubble, allowing visitors from other maritime provinces to come starting on July 3rd. As we get ready for the tourism season to start, there are still some unanswered questions about Canada's COVID-19 response applying to the sector. Today we asked Mike Kellaway about the wage subsidy for companies employing family members and about help for businesses that will remain closed this year. Here's our conversation. Like it happened with the fishers, the wage subsidy did not apply to family members working um, for other family members in a small business. And that's pretty common in a small community like this one. So what should they do? So actually, uh, Paulo, I just got off the phone with um, a meeting with uh, folks that um, are, have senior positions with Service Canada and some people that are on the file uh, politically. And so uh, our folks uh, in Ottawa in Employment Services and Development Canada are actually working on um, some um, programs uh, to help uh, to help on the uh, on the seasonal worker when it comes to, to, to EOT. Uh, so that's forthcoming. So uh, it's a big thing for obviously for, uh, for your viewers and for myself, um, especially when it comes to tourism. Uh, so there's a couple of things. Uh, one, um, I think it's reasonable to say that this tourism season is not gonna be like last year's. Um, with the Atlantic bubble, that will help, um, no doubt. Uh, but we also need to ensure that uh, tourism operators and people that work in the tourism industry in particular uh, will have access to EI. And some of those folks may not have the exact number of weeks uh, that is traditionally used for EI. So uh, things are being worked on on that front. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm pushing that as an MP. Uh, and in terms of the arm's length piece with weight, the wage subsidy, uh, we're also you know pushing that as well. Nothing to report as of yet. But that whole concept of seasonal workers, um, like you mentioned around the fishery, uh, that we played a major role in, uh, we're, we're, we're pushing that as well. So nothing to report yet, but it's not just on the radar, it's in discussions as we, as we speak. Right, because I was speaking with somebody, who, who it was a couple, so the wife was working in the business that was under the husband's name. She would have to hire somebody else to do her job, which she's been doing for years. So that, that causes a lot of difficulty. No question. Um, and again, what we've seen through, through all of this is that there's a lot of strengths and measures that we've put out uh, that are helping people, but um, when the entire country um, is impacted, you're, you're going to miss some real key fundamental things, not because of neglect or intent, just but by the fact that it's a massive, massive pandemic. Um, so your point's really valid, and that, that, that is something that's emblematic of a lot of, in particular, the tourism sector, but other sectors as well uh, in, the, in the riding. So uh, we're on top of it. I hope to have more information for you and your viewers as we, as we progress, but no doubt it's problematic, it's stressful, it causes great anxiety, uh, and it also has an impact on the ability to operate uh, or not operate. Uh, so very important to me. Uh, so for your viewers, uh, please keep uh, informing you of, of those examples because it helps me to uh, tell those personal stories because that's how I, I use data, but I use the personal stories when I'm in caucus. So uh, I don't use people's names, but just in generalities of, of, of how things are. And consequently, too, uh, Paula, that um, the entire Atlantic caucus is in the same same boat as, as Cape Breton can. So in terms of those same stories that are impacting uh, Newfoundland or, or PEI or mainland Nova Scotia or, or New Brunswick. So uh, I appreciate that feedback because it helps me. Um, I was in Shetty Camp last weekend, um, last Friday. I, uh, I'm doing these uh, unannounced, just kind of dropping by to community agencies and groups and businesses just to check and see how things are going. Uh, now and uh, how things have been, um, and yeah, there's some uh, there's some challenges. There's no question about it. And I bought twelve lobsters everywhere I go. I'm buying lobsters uh, and uh, buy lobsters in Shetty Camp, which are gone now. Uh, they went quickly, um, but I hear that I hear that on the ground too, Paul. And it's something that again, 
is um, even 10 minutes ago, I was chatting with those folks in Ottawa about. What types of services can a business that's closing access and how will they go about doing it? So there's a couple that are a few actually. So if you look at it from a business perspective, um, and again, these are things that we would need to talk to um, those that are triaging it directly. But I mean, if you look at the Canada Emergency uh, Response Benefit, that's been extended for an additional eight weeks. Where we go from there is a great question, but it's it's been extended, so there may be opportunities there. Uh, when it comes to um, uh, Look, depending on the sector, of course, uh, is approaching of COA, Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency, with respect to some of the monies that were uh, provided to the regional development authorities across Canada in terms of operating assistance and help. Uh, on the, uh, we have our BDCs uh, as well uh, that do provide um, not re- non repayable loans, but lo- loans uh, that are uh, uh, supposed to be at. Uh, uh, low interest rates and to assist on that front. Um, that's that's some other ones. And then the larger scale businesses have uh, another avenue to go with a call with some additional monies for 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 them. Um, so these are kind of um, kind of a broad scope of uh, of of avenues to pursue in terms of helping uh, people bridge uh, bridge bridge the gap. And of course, on August twenty eighth the current tradition of the Canada wage subsidy concludes. Um, but um, you know, we've been holding focus groups in the riding uh, to talk about people's experience with the wage subsidy, the good and, uh, and, and the challenging. And my, my expectation, again, my expectation as an MP and my hope and, my, and the drive I'm putting behind it is that that's extended, but extended uh, based on modifications from people that have been providing us grassroots information uh, from the writing. Uh, so I think that these are some options and opportunities. But again, what I would really recommend um, is that if there are companies out there, small businesses, individual self-employed folks um, that want to talk to someone directly, is reach out to our office. Um, and, and, we, and, and we'll get a caseworker working on it immediately uh, in terms of helping you navigate. Um, uh, all of the programs that are out there because it can be daunting. Um, uh, I was on a call today that uh, and that somebody said, you know, uh, they were talking about a measure uh, and from government and they said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the wrong measure. So it's kind of, you can easily get caught up in a sea of exceptionally well-intended programs and not know where you fit. So what we can do is we can triage it to a point and then connect the individual or individuals to the right people. And then what we like to do as an office is follow up that aftercare. See, okay, so where are you with this? And how are you getting along with this? So these are things that we can do as an office, in which we've been doing, um, the five of us, and uh, it's uh, it, it, it's been uh, it's been it's been it's been uh, demanding work, but but important work. So that's why we're here for your viewers. That's why we're here. We're here to if you don't know where to go, and you and going to a website just doesn't suffice because I can be honest with you. Going on websites, the information is there, but there's a lot of it. And if you're running a business or you're, or you're involved in some form of a business or working for an employer and you've got 900 different demands on your time, it can get overwhelming. So look to our office, reach out to our office, and we'll triage it for you. You can send us your questions from Mike Calloway at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.